Hey, I'm Rachel. Welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. Apparently today is lawn mowing day in the neighborhood. Uh, this video is probably going to go up late because I have been waiting for a time period where nobody is mowing their lawn and they are all perfectly staggering. But hopefully that doesn't detract from the audio too much um, and hopefully you'll still be able to hear me through the whole garden tour. So that out of the way, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, if you didn't know, I do a garden tour every single Wednesday here in my backyard garden that I started from just straight lawn um, a little over a year ago now, beginning of last summer. And every week I come here to not only show you what's going on, but also talk you through my thought process as I'm like in real time solving problems in the garden. And hopefully you guys can learn a little bit from this. So today in particular, I am picking basil to make some pesto. Um, yesterday I came through and pulled things like eggplants and tomatoes, so there's not a lot of that to pull today. Although I am seeing a ton of purple pole beans, which is like an everyday thing. Along my tomato trellis here at the front or the right side of the garden, um, I do have three pole bean plants along the 30 feet here. And that has turned out to be more than enough. This first one in particular, uh, it just can't stop producing. I have pulled like two pounds of beans from these plants like literally yesterday. Um, and here we are with more that are like just super ready to pick. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and get a lot of these out of here. But uh, I'm not gonna complain too hard because these are beautiful and delicious. As we continue down this row, you can see the tomatoes look a little sadder than they did last week, and that's a trend that will continue. Um, there's a big red one down there that is entirely rotted through, um, and this one that's next to it, it just started blushing, so I think I'm going to pull that. Oh, and it is starting to get rotted through. That is really sad. Um, I've been noticing this happening more uh, frequently as we get towards the end of the season. I, I don't think... I don't think I want to mess with that. I see an actual live uh, worm in there. Um, but yeah, so near the end of the season, tomatoes will start looking like this. And uh, I'm only going to get probably what's on them and nothing more before I have to pull them out. But I've already pre-planted, let me just throw this in here. I've already pre-planted a replacement crop. And if I look carefully, yeah, I can see it coming up. Um, right in here, that sprout right there, that is a fava bean. And these are gonna come up. Um, and in a couple of weeks, when the tomatoes come out, these will have plenty of room to grow up. And this kind of uh, dovetailing overlapping of crops is a great way to um, save a little bit of time and like maximize your harvest uh, on both ends. Uh, there's so many more beans. I actually have some that I have had to leave because I missed them and they got too big to eat. So these are gonna continue developing and I'm gonna pull dried beans from them. Oh, look at these. I thought I pulled all of these yesterday, but apparently not. Let's go put these in a basket. And this jungly area is becoming even more of a jungle. Corn got blown over into it, and at the same time, the beans and the tomatoes are pushing over this way, and the peppers are uh, just crowded in between everything. Um, and the reason that I don't take the time to come in here and cut everything back is mostly because I don't really have the time. Um, I struggle as a single person to get everything done in this large garden that I want to. And so you have to start prioritizing things and something like trimming back this jungle is somewhere near the bottom of the list because there's always picking produce at this time of year and making sure that it gets processed and put up so that it doesn't go to waste. Um, and there's a little bit of waste from not having everything pruned back 
and giving the plants the space to produce in the first place. But that is still a lower tier on the list than pick what's actually being produced and make sure that it doesn't go to waste. I'm going to set you guys up while I pull basil. It sounds like lawn mowing has actually stopped. Well, that is all of the easy to reach basil in the front and uh, this is all the basil I have so far. I think with all the plants back in the jungle I can probably easily have double this or um, maybe even triple this much to go make a batch of pesto. I've got that was this is five plants worth of basil that I harvested and I probably have like another like eight to ten somewhere in that jungle. I'm gonna come down this row here with the corn. I haven't seen any more of that uh, corn smut, the corn fungus. Um, and right now I am waiting for these to sort of dry out so that I can bring them inside and save them for popcorn. Uh, if I wanted to, I could bring them inside for fresh eating, but I am way more of a popcorn girl and uh, I would rather have my own homegrown popcorn. So hopefully that works out. I've never actually successfully made popcorn from homegrown corn before. Oh, look at that one. It's all the way on the ground. Never made popcorn from homegrown corn successfully before, but uh, as with all things, stepping over this giant nasturtium, I keep trying uh, because that's how you learn. Oh wow, so over here, I knew that I had some sweet potato tubers swarming. Um, this looks suspiciously like one of them got pulled out by something um, and I had covered them up because I felt like it wasn't time to harvest them yet um, but this is my first time growing sweet potatoes so I don't really know but I figure like regular potatoes they probably should not be exposed to the sun uh, it could be that things got washed off of them during that big storm though I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out just to to have a look oh wow there's more under there too I can feel them Oh, this is really deep in there. Maybe I can't get just one. Oh, oh there we go. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That is a massive sweet potato. That is so cool. This also doesn't look great over here. This uh, eggplant. And this base right here has completely fallen over, probably from the wind in that storm. Not ideal, but it doesn't seem to be dead. It's just kind of crushing the pepper plants beneath it. Let's see what happens if we if we pull it up. Oh wow, this is a heavy plant. This is this is now where this plant lives. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be stood back up, but um yeah, that's the jungle of a garden for you. It kind of just does what it wants. On the bright side, it's now super easy for me to harvest my Tabasco peppers. These things are so cool. You can see maybe down on the other side a little better, some of the ones that are ripening and these ones that are still waiting to change colors. Uh, for Tabasco peppers, usually I can tell that they are ready when I reach in and go to pull it off and it just like pops right off easily. Uh, I don't have to tug, it just kind of falls. Uh, and that is uh, different than other peppers where usually I am pulling and they are detaching from the plant at the base of the stem. Um, but Tabasco peppers are 
slightly uh, different genetically from a lot of other peppers you grow in your garden. So I assume that that's kind of why they do this. My front trellis here is pretty well dead. Um, this one vine is kind of hanging on, um, but I'm not seeing it put on any more flowers. It's very stressed from all the damage um, and it is time for me to just go ahead and tear it out. I am getting ready to plant some peas on this trellis. I have some peas that should grow to be about 10 feet tall, um, so this is a really good sized trellis for that. Um, but moving towards the noodle beans, um, these things are unaffected by literally anything, be it rain, lack of rain, heat, pests. Um, for the most part, they just keep producing and keep looking great. I'll see a leaf like this every so often, um, but if you look at these vines where it's producing new stuff, um, these look absolutely lovely and luscious and healthy. Um, so this plant just keeps on going. I cannot recommend it enough. This is a Chinese red noodle bean. It's been super prolific and I can't wait to use all the dried beans that I'm harvesting from it to make a chili in the winter. Right now it is about 88 degrees out here, uh, coming up on 90 for the day. Very, very hot, um, which is why this next section past the noodle beans is still completely bare. It is for uh, carrots and root vegetables, and specifically carrots are going to have a hard time germinating if the temperature is above 80, and so I have to wait for the weather to come down below that before I can start my carrot seeds outdoors. These two little patches of ginger right here and here, though, they are loving this heat. I really am looking forward to harvest time to see how much uh, ginger root I'm going to get from that. And then coming down to the last row, uh, we have still all of these zinnias intermixed with some hot peppers. Uh, zinnias keep producing flowers uh, throughout the entire summer season. You can see a range from brand new bud to somewhat old flowers um, and whenever I see like the uh, dead heads like uh, this I've been pulling some of them and just kind of randomly collecting seeds to make a beautiful zinnia mix to just throw around next year. Down here these are um, Anaheim peppers. I've been really enjoying these as uh, stuffing peppers so I will roast them in the broiler, peel the skin off, stuff them with cheese, and bread them and fry them. I guess that's kind of like a jalapeno popper. These are less spicy than jalapenos, uh, but they still have a really satisfying kick to them. Coming down here further, I am finally getting to harvest from this plant. Uh, this is supposed to be, I think, a big gym jalapeno. Um, but there's a chance that I mixed it up with the banana pino pepper uh, because this looks more like a banana pino than the ones that I have labeled as banana pinos. Uh, but either way, they are similar uh, spice level and a similar kind of plant. So here I can pull one of these. Um, similar kind of plant, similar spice level, and uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess, what you call them. I just will have to buy seeds next year to make sure that I know which variety is which because if I save them, then I might have them backwards forever. <laughs> and then briefly I'll show you how the new Brussels sprout seedlings are coming along. Um, all but two of them actually just died. I think the sun is just so intense right now. Um, this one is looking the best. And then we have this one over here. Um, and there were like four more in this area that I can't even find the dead stems of. They're so dead. Um, but thankfully I have more started inside. They're going to be a little later, but I do have some. This year has been uh, quite an experiment for me in terms of timing, being my second year gardening in this spot. Um, I'm still not very familiar with the exact timings of certain things, especially because I haven't done a lot of fall vegetables before and the timing on that seems to be a little more sensitive than the timing on summer stuff because I am in South Carolina. This is zone 7b and it is a very mild climate except for when it gets hot in the summer. So the window to grow frost tender things is pretty wide. It's really hard to screw up. 
but the window for growing uh, things that are frost hardy but need like cool weather and not like like freezing weather all the time that is a much smaller window so getting the timing right is tough all right guys well it is officially way too hot for me out here and i am going to go inside before i get sunburned but i will have this video out to you on time which i think is worth something as far as the raised bed and the berry patch go they look approximately the same as they always do i planted some new seeds in the herb bed We'll see if those come up. Those just got planted yesterday, so there's definitely no seedlings to look at. Um, and the berry patch is growing, plodding along slowly. I am still fighting the grass and the weeds on that. Still not entirely sure what the long-term solution to that is. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, happy gardening!